another area that bring the plethora of opinions between the different Muslims, I will not come and start banning Muslims from my community. Today, wherever I go in a mosque in the world, people come and ask me, should we ban the speaker or not? Should we ban him or not? Should we ban him or not? I'm like, why are you banning everybody? You know, what's going on? You're a banning machine or a taqwa machine? Yes, what are you? Said, oh, you know, at the end of this, Rasulullah and his companions. Amongst them, he had Ali ibn Abi Talib. Amongst them, he had Umar ibn al-Khattab. Amongst them, he had Amr ibn al-As. Amongst them, later on even, Khalid ibn al-Walid, Mughira ibn Shu'ba. Tell me, did the Prophet tell Umar ibn al-Khattab that you are banned from my mosque in Medina, get out? I defy anyone to show me that the Prophet told Umar, you are banned from the mosque in Medina. Even when Umar called him delirious. Umar ibn al-Khattab calls the Prophet delirious on his deathbed when he asks for a pen and paper. And the Prophet does not ban him. And now you come and start banning everybody who loves Muhammad and Al Muhammad. How? 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 Either I follow the masjid of Rasulullah or I make up my own religion. The Holy Prophet saw a plethora of opinions. Yes, he made it clear, for example. I leave behind for you the Quran and my Ahlul Bayt. That's clear enough. Or Ali is to me like Harun is to Musa. It's clear. But even those who differed with him, never do you see Rasulullah turning around and say, that person, we ban him from the masjid because he has a difference with me. There were companions who questioned his prophethood on the day of Hudaybiyah, did not ban them. There were companions who called him delirious. There were companions who did not join Osama's army because they felt they were older than him. There were compa companions, all of these were doing all of this. Did the prophet turn around and ban? Today when I hear that there are mosques which are banning speakers, why? Why are you banning? Oh, because you know, we're not sure about his belief. What, he is left 12th Imam? No, he does believe in the 12th Imam. Oh, why are you banning him then? Oh, because, oh, sorry, let me, let me ask you another question. Is it because he believes the Quran is not the book of God? No, no, he does. Oh, okay, he doesn't like Imam Hussein? No, he loves Imam Al Hussein. So what's your issue then? Oh, um, there's certain legal issues we have a difference of opinion on. Now you can differ in law from now until the day of judgment. As long as the usul deen of the person is strong, I'm not worried about anything else. Yes. If a person now wants to come and speak at our mosque, let them come and let them have a commonsensical issue, which is what? Which is that when anyone comes to speak in the mosque, I can agree to agree or I can agree to disagree. I can say, listen, I agree with some of your opinions, but there's certain areas which I disagree with because I'm a pharmacy student far away from Islamic history or theology or law, but I still believe that I have absolute right to uh, say that I disagree with you even though I've read none of the books that you've ever read. So, you can have that if you want, there's no problem at all, but the reality is that when a person who wants to come and sit on our member, that person who's a lover of Al Muhammad, who's a lover of the Ahlul Bayt, he will come and sit here. If you have a difference of fiqh issues with him, sit with the person afterwards. Say, listen, this fiqh issue, can you explain it a bit further? Let's have open-mindedness in our mosques, like the open-mindedness that our Prophet built in his mosques. Otherwise, our kids will go to other religions because they'll feel they are more open-minded than our narrow-minded traditional establishments.